Alright guys, in today's video I have a Droid um, Droid X is what this is. This is a Motorola Droid X and let me go ahead and I'm going to show you guys how to root this device. This is running Gingerbread uh, which is Android version 2.3.4 so let's go ahead and just show it to you guys so you guys can follow along here. If you go down to about phone you will see that we are running right here Android version 2.3.4 right there by my thumb so that is the Android version you are on and this root uh, video is going to be on how to root a bunch of different devices on this Android version um, but this is specifically right here this device is the Droid X so uh, first things you're going to want to do is go ahead and have your device like here right now we're obviously on stock and you know you do not have root permission I can check it right here with root checker this is an application we can go ahead and check it and it says sorry this device does not have proper root access so what we're gonna do to get root access um, but we're gonna go ahead and we're going to show you guys on my computer how to burn the boot disk so that this functions correctly because um, basically what you're going to do is you're going to burn an image disk uh, and then you're going to reboot your computer into this basically a Linux operating system and it's going to be set up specifically just for um, getting root permission on this device and a couple other ones. So let me show you what utilities you're going to want and what files you're going to need. Let's go check out my computer and we'll start there. So what we're going to do here is um, we're going to check out the files you're going to need on your computer. Is This one right here is Droid 2. Droid 2 Global, Droid X, Droid X2 Root CD 2012. And this is an iOS image. So if you go to properties and you look at it, the file type is .iOS. So it's an image file. So you're going to need that file. You're going to go down here and you're going to use a program which you can get from CNET or probably my website I think has it also hosted. It's called Power ISO. And you're going to open it up and you're going to click burn. You're going to put a CD in your CD drive or DVD, whichever you prefer. You're going to make sure image file is selected right there. And you're going to search for it. Well, I know where mine's downloaded. It's already opened up to that location. You're going to double click it. It's going to be listed. And then you're going to hit burn. So when that is done, it's going to have this disk that looks kind of like, well, you probably can't see this, but you know just a disk it says root uh, on it I wrote it on there whatever so you're gonna have a disk like this you're gonna go ahead and sit this in your stick this thing in your drive of your computer so I'm gonna do that right now we're gonna stick it in there and we got that in the drive so I'm gonna close this let's say it finished burning I'm not gonna show you how to burn it but you know you just hit the burn button down there so you would close all this stuff out and we would go ahead and go to here and do well here's the disk I just put in this is what it's called, Siltaz. So anyway, we're going to go down here and go to Reboot. Now the computer is going to reboot and we're going to boot into a Linux operating system, which is, um, you know, it's just kind of funky. It actually, it's, it's its own operating system on this disk. So you're not going to run be running Windows at all. Uh, most computers are set up to go ahead and boot. Um, Go ahead and boot into an image disk on the CD drive. Just always set up like that. If it's not, you'll have to go into your uh, your BIOS and go to your boot menu and go ahead and change the order of stuff. Normally, you can do that by hitting uh, like F11 or Escape or something like that on boot up of the computer. I'm not going to go really into that too much for you guys. I'm just going to go ahead and let you see what happens when this boots up and we're going to go through the process on it. You are going to want to make sure that your Droid X right here has plenty of battery life on it. I prefer having a full charge before starting this procedure um, just in case because it does take a little bit of time. The slower your computer is the longer it's going to take for the files that it has to do. So make sure you've got that and then lastly Make sure when you plug this thing into your computer, try to use um, a USB port on the back of the computer. I've tried other ones on the front of my computer, on my tower, and it will not function because this Linux operating system right here that's booting up behind me um, doesn't see the device unless I plug it into a USB port on the back. 
I mean, you'll plug it in and it won't say it's charging, it won't say it's got a USB connected, it won't do nothing if you're in the wrong kind of port. So, you want to make sure that you get it in a port that functions correctly, and then you want to make sure you follow these directions in this operating system behind me that's booting up. So, this is what it's going to look like. This is actually booting the operating system and you're running it off of the uh, off the CD or DVD, whichever you did. So right here, you guys can see what this actually does. It will root all these devices, the Droid 2, the uh, Droid R2-D2, the Droid 2 Global, the Droid X, or the Droid X2. And this is all for Android version. These All these devices have to be an Android version 2.3.4, which you can see right up here um, at the top up there. So, like I said, this is the Droid X. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this thing in really quick, guys to my computer alright so it should be uh, plugged in right there it should be functioning and then I'm gonna go ahead and select uh, three so you're just gonna on your keyboard you're gonna go ahead and select three and use the numbers not the numbers on the right of your keyboard use them on the top and then hit enter and it says to go ahead and check all of these things so uh, you're going to want to make sure USB debugging is turned on. So let me go ahead and show you guys that on the device. So we want to make sure USB debugging is turned on, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go into settings. And we're going to go to applications, developer settings. And then right here you're going to make sure USB debugging is turned on. And mine is already checked. It's got a green box on it. And then the last thing you want to do is when you plug this thing into the computer you're going to pull this down and there will be a notification here about USB mode and make sure it says it's in charge only mode so let me go ahead and plug this in and then we'll continue so go ahead and it says press enter when you've got your device plugged in and it looks like it's going to go ahead and uh, start there's some some stuff here going ahead and starting up so let's, let's let this thing run So it did a little something here and it gives you directions on how to get your device into bootloader mode. So um, let's go ahead and do that. So to do that, let me show you guys what you got to do. Okay, so to do that, to get it in bootloader mode, what we're going to do is we're going to power off the device. Go ahead and make sure you leave it plugged in when you're doing this. Power off. Alright, so then we're going to push the camera button on the side the volume down button, hold them, and then push the power button. You're going to see a little bit of a flash on the screen, then let go of them. That will put you in bootloader mode, okay? So once we do this, we continue to the next step. All right, so let's go ahead and continue to the next step by pushing enter. Now that we're in bootloader mode. So it's unzipping files, and it is flashing all of this stuff and skipping this and waiting for phone verifying some stuff on the side there and now it's going to upload this CG66 CG66 is probably going to take you anywhere from five to ten minutes to load so you just gotta be patient here and let the device sit there this is the reason you want to have good battery life you don't want this thing to die in this middle of this process that's could not that's never a good thing for your device so I'm gonna pause here until it finishes this process and we'll come back to it when it's towards the end alright guys as you can see here um, CG 66 is uh, wrapping up the uh, uploading process so as soon as it finishes up here uh, the device is going to go ahead and reboot as you can see right there and it's going to reboot and it's going to wait for the device to reboot when it's finished rebooting I think it's going to reboot again and then it's going to finish the uh, root process. So you're just going to be patient here again. Like I said, we've already been in this process for about 10 minutes. Um, and it's just automated from this point on. You're going to see your, your uh, Droid device rebooting. Um, and just kind of be patient with it. Once it reboots, you can leave it or you can unlock the screen. Whichever it really does. shouldn't make any difference on that. So just give it some time and we'll catch it when it finishes the next process here. So there you go, that is the second reboot. So let's let the phone reboot again. It'll wait for it to reboot and continue the process.
All right, so there you go. It is now routing the phone and finishing flashing those things. So at this point, you just got to finish up what we got going here. The phone is going to reboot into recovery and we can finish the process out. So let me go ahead and show you that as the phone reboots here. Okay, so here you go. The phone is rebooted into recovery. To actually fully access recovery, you're going to want to hit the volume up and down at the exact same time. And you will see this screen. Uh, let me see if I can get a better shot of it. Okay, so right here, um, if you scroll down with the volume buttons, you can scroll down to where it says uh, wipe cache partition. And you're going to hit with the power button. You're going to select that. And it is going to go ahead and wipe the cache partition. When you are done wiping the cache partition, we're going to reboot the phone. And we, you will have root access on your device. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, shouldn't take too long here to wipe the partition. There you go. First thing on the very top says reboot system now. So go ahead and hit power button and the device will reboot. You're going to see your Motorola logo and it'll boot up just like it normally would. It might take a minute longer than normal uh, because you wiped your cache partition. It's got to rebuild that, which is not an issue at all. Not a big deal. So I'm going to go ahead and set this down. I'm going to finish up here on the computer what we're doing. So right here it says once you've done all these steps, go ahead and push enter to continue. And it comes back to your screen to pick what device you have. So you can see right there option number 5 is shut down and that is shut down your computer. So we're going to hit 5 and hit enter and it will shut down the computer um, completely powered off it will not reboot so you're gonna have to push the button on your computer to reboot it um, as you're doing that I would go ahead and hit your uh, eject button on your CD drive otherwise it will boot back into uh, the root process on the on the computer so I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now before it messes up on us Oop. Come on, there we go, get my CD out right here. And let's go ahead, the phone is now booted up and let my computer boot up. And let me go ahead and show you guys the phone. So here we go, here's the phone. Let's go ahead and go into our uh, applications down here and there it is right here. You can see you have a super user. This is the super user application right here. Let's back out of it though and let's go into um, right here, root checker and let's check to see if we have root access now on the device verify root access yep there you go it asks for super user access and there it is congratulations this device has root access that is it guys that is the full process here this this works pretty much the exact same way on uh, all of those devices listed so i hope you guys have liked this video show you how to do this on basically android version 2.3.4 um, if you do please give me a thumbs up you can check out my webpage right above my thumb here lots of great information on it right there follow me on Facebook or Twitter and as always uh, have a good night and we'll catch you guys another time thanks for watching